Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAdamation.com and welcome to another video for GraphQL video series. And in this video, I'll be talking about understanding queries in much greater detail. It's going to be a continuation of our previous video where we're discussing about the introduction to GraphQL and how the GraphQL is actually going to help you compared to the normal REST API calls. And in this video, we'll be talking about understanding the queries. And I have split this into two parts, basically, because we have so many things to discuss. And in this video, we'll be discussing about fields, arguments, alias, and operation names. So what is this fields in GraphQL? Basically, you can see that in every query, you have got a lot of fields, like the query have a product type, and within that, it has got fields like name and price. This is something we saw even in our earlier video, where we tried to query a product type, which is going to actually hold some of the fields like name and price in it. And these are the one which is going to return you the response basically from the GraphQL server itself. And because there are situations that you might also need to query a specific product like product of name as keyboard or mouse or product of ID is equal to one or two, something like that, you will probably end up with what is called as an arguments, which is going to look something like this. As you can see, we have a product field which is going to have a name colon followed by the argument that you are passing in which is something but the keyboard because the keyboard is something that you're going to pass in the argument for the name you need to give the name there if it is id then you need to specify id colon something like that and then followed by the rest of the things which is going to look pretty much exactly the same like how we saw before but there are even some situations where your client might require the product's field name with some different name itself. For example, the name field can be of something like a product name and similarly components can be like important components, something like that. If you want to just change the field name to your own custom naming, then you can use what is called as an alias in GraphQL. So you can specify the same query, something like this. As you can see over here, you have an alias name as product name colon followed by the actual field itself, which is nothing but the name field. And similarly, the components field is actually been aliased with a name as important components. And once you call this, you will see that the response is going to look something like this. As you can see, instead of the name, it is going to be like product name. And similarly, instead of components, it is like important components. So this is coming basically because of alias. And this is something you can use if your client is looking for response of type something with this particular field name. So you can give that as well, which is pretty cool. And then comes the operation name. Operation names are also very, very important because you might be using different queries within your query operation. So you might need to differentiate between both the queries. For example, in this query, I actually have got what is called as a products and similarly components. So these two are differentiated using its operation name. So you can see that query has got a name this time instead of just query of braces opened. So it's a query products. Similarly, it's query components, which is cool. And finally, I wanted to also show you something called as variables. So these variables are very handy if you are going to basically pass as an query variables within GraphQL. For example, if you want to query a product using its ID, you can pass that as a query variable or like parameters, query parameters, which we used in our REST API call. We can do the same exact things over here, but just that this is going to be coming from a query variable in GraphQL and the syntax is going to look something like this. As you can see for this query, it is using an operation name as product. And then within that, we are also passing a variable as a dollar product ID colon ID of exclamation. So you may be wondering what is this exclamation? Basically, it is actually telling it's not null. So this ID should not be null. That is what it's, it's referring to. So that's what you need to pass in over here. And then ID colon of dollar product is nothing but the parameter that we are passing in, like how we saw before, like an argument. And then we can do the rest of the call, even with the alias in the name. That's it. This is how we can actually do that. And in order to pass the product ID, we need to do something like this, like product ID colon one in the query variable of the playground. And you will see how it actually looks like. So we'll see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to my VS Code IDE. All right, so this is a code that we were looking in our earlier video as well. And I'm actually gonna run this particular application and I will show you how it actually looks like. So the first thing is, I'm actually going to run this application. And it brings me up this playground. And now I'm gonna start typing things over here. So let's say if I want to start typing 
the arc query. So I'm just gonna open the braces over here. So let's see one by one, starting from the fields. So for example, if I want to query the products, and I also know that within my docs, it shows that I have something called as product queries that I can pass in, and also product and components and component like that. So I can do the exact same thing over here. So let's go with the plural, which is nothing but the products. And if I open a braces over there, and you will see that it is actually going to show me fields within the particular products type. So if I just do control space, it is gonna show me all the different fields which has got like name, description, something like that. So let me make this as bigger a bit so that you can see it clearly. There you go. And then I'm gonna do something like descriptions. That's it. And once I hit this playground, you will see that it is gonna show me all the different responses coming in for that particular product. And similarly, if I want to go even deep with its components, so if I just go type comma, and do control space, you will see that it has got something called as components. And then because components is basically like a type, like component type, you can see while I go near over here while hovering it, it's gonna show me what type it is. So the component type, then I can just open up phrases over there, control space, then name, and then description. And that's gonna give me the components as well, which is quite cool. So this is how we can actually uh, get a products over here. But let's say if I want to get a specific product from the products, because you can see there are so many products coming in, uh, like product, so we can also see the ID actually. So if I just do an ID, you can see it has ID one, two, three, four, like there are four products over here. So if I want to search for a specific product with an ID one, probably the keyboard product, then you can't just go and type the braces over here because it's, parenthesis over here because it will show you an error here because you can't really do it for the products type. Basically you need to use product. And then if you do control space, you will see that it's gonna give you even the option like what argument that you're passing as a parameter. For example, ID and name. So if I wanna choose the ID, then you can see that it's gonna show you the query dot product of ID colon ID. So you may be wondering what is this query dot product of ID colon ID? Well, I will show you a bit on the code type, like how it's gonna look like, but don't worry about the coding interested in for that. So if you go to the query over here, I have written the code in such a way that I can pass the query as ID and a name for the product. And that's exactly what we are doing over here. For the product, we are actually passing in the ID and the name and that's exactly what it is coming up over here like id so if i specify something else like ids or something like that it is going to show you that particular stuff over here so all these things are coming from this particular code for you all right so enough information on the coding side we are not really interested on that yet or we are not even going to go there yet so let's just type what we're going to be doing and because this id is actually of id graph type and it is actually uh, of an integer type that I'm resolving within my code, something like this. You can say integer of not null. So you need to pass an integer type over here, like one. So once I execute this code, you will see that it's gonna show me the keyboard with all the different components it has got, which is quite cool. So I can even search within the component, like the, I also have a component type here where I can pass the name. So for example, if I want to uh, search for a component using its uh, name as key, so I can just put colon of double quotes of key, and if I just search, you can see that it's gonna show me the component with just key in it, which is awesome. So I can also do multiple queries within a query and it keep going inside that, which is cool. So these things are the power of the GraphQL itself as I was talking about. So that's about the arguments within GraphQL. And the next thing we are gonna talk about is the alias. So alias is very, very simple guys. Like as I told you before, you can just put a product name and then you can just put a colon space. You will see that it is gonna be of a uh, alias basically. And if you just go over here, you can see that it tells you the product name, but it doesn't really tell you that this is gonna be an alias. So if I just execute this, you will see that it's gonna show me that the product name as keyboard instead of name colon keyboard. So that's what is the alias is all about. And 
operation names or something again very very interesting so if you can uh, search a query something like this you can see that it's working fine but if i want to do the exact same thing control v and if i see that once i do that it's going to show me an error on the playground saying that uh, you cannot have a query with the same name so basically it is like an anonymous operation so you are performing two queries but they need to be differentiated within the playground itself so in order to do that you actually need to give an operation name for example this is for the product one and this is for probably product two and you can differentiate that so let's say i just put an ids2 there you can see that now the error is gone and once i try executing it this execution thing is going to show me two queries this time see that product one and product two so i can choose product one and if i try executing it it's going to show me that particular result and if i choose product two it is going to show me different data this time like mouse over there which is cool so that's the power of the operation name and finally we can talk about what is called as the query variables so the variables are also very very important for example if you want to pass this id as hard coded one and two from here instead if i want to pass it like a variables from outside you can actually use this query variable of the playground so for example uh, if i want to use something like a product id so i'm just gonna give like product id and if I just do a control space, you will see that it is going to tell me what type that I should be using, what scalar type that I should be using. Again, don't worry about the scalar types yet. So just go with what are types that we have. And we also need to use the exclamation over here so that it's not nullable. And then I'm going to be using the dollar product as the argument for this particular product that I'm passing in. And now I need to pass this product ID from outside. So how do I do that? Well, I can just do the exact same thing from here. And then if I open a double course here, you will see that it's going to show me the product ID and it is of ID not nullable, which is cool. So I can just pass in over there. And then let's say if I'm passing three there and if I try executing the product one, do you see that it's going to show me the monitor? And now if I pass four, it's going to show me cabinet, I think. There you go. So that's how it actually works. So I can pass something like this and it all works without any problem. So this is how we can actually work with the, what is called as variables in GraphQL. So that's it guys. This is how we can actually work with fields, arguments, alias, operation names, and query variables. Meet you in the next video while we talk even further about mutations and other advanced concepts. Once again, thank you for watching this video and you guys have a great day.